Hey everyone, Dr. Liz here. I was going through some old files and notes and ran across a story that I would like to share for you about how important self-talk is as well as um, breathing and like training yourself how to react under difficult circumstances. So um, to become a Navy SEAL, there's this one period called Hell Week which uh, breaks a lot of potential candidates. They don't make it through Hell Week. And it's really important because what they do is like in a practice assault on the breathing in a pool, a pool of water. Um, when your body is faced with a lack of oxygen, like when you're in a panic attack, okay, and the inability to breathe, it shoves it into like this whole other physiological reaction that's... Um, that's, um, you know, triggered in the brain, right? A whole host of like biochemical stuff happens and honestly like sheer panic usually takes over. And that's the normal reaction of a body. So what the U.S. government did is they studied the effects of Hell Week and scientists found that there were four tools that helped people through Hell Week, help the candidates pass Hell Week and actually become Navy SEALs. So, and if you don't know what Navy SEALs are in the U.S., they're part of the um, special forces, like elite training. You got to go through all this stuff <laughs> to be able to do it. It's not just like the regular military that someone can sign up for. So there were four tools. We're big on fours this month. I had another one that had four, didn't I? Any, another video? Anyway, four tools. One first tool was self-talk. If you're able to maintain clear and positive and careful directions to yourself during a difficult time um, it's going to help you you need to be your own coach so this is not putting yourself down this is actually building yourself tell, up telling yourself to hang in there and um, saying all kinds of positive stuff about yourself like you can do this and you can do this in a very gentle voice if you like um, there's a famous uh, I'm trying to think if he went through Navy SEALs week or whether I know he's a Marine. David Goggins writes a lot of books and he's on podcasts and stuff. And he has like the worst self-talk <laughs> of anyone I've ever met. I mean, I've never met him, but he's awful. He like yells at himself basically. And you can imagine he shares in his book that he had a extremely violent, abusive childhood. So he learned this like super critical, abusive voice. You don't have to use that one, okay? But obviously, it, that voice helped him achieve incredible things in his life. But as a therapist, I don't exactly recommend a harsh, critical voice. I recommend you can use a gentle, positive voice or a firm, positive voice. But the important thing is that you have this positive self-talk that keeps yourself going. Like, you can do this. All right. Number two. Uh, mentally rehearse or practice while maintaining a positive emotional outlook. So this prepares your nervous system to be calm. When you rehearse and practice um, while being positive, it actually prepares yourself to do that in the future when a crisis arises. Three, set small attainable goals to measure your success and pace yourself through the movement. So this is really interesting. Um, I've heard this in all kinds of like high achieving physical feats that the smaller you could break it down, the better. So like, oh, I'm just gonna run another 10 steps. I can make it through 10 steps um, in talking to yourself like that. Or I can make it like two seconds more. That's all I need, two seconds more. Like to break it down really small. Um, four, gain control over your state of arousal through breath control you heard it here it is through breath control and I do so much breathing in my practice um, you can yeah, I have videos on breathing but you can surge them up very easily there's all kinds of breathing there's a box of breathing which is one two three four there's um inhale to four pause exhale to eight those are just two right off the top of my head there's counting your breaths to 21 which is a buddhist technique and then if you get distracted somewhere in there, you start over. All of those count. But the more you practice breath control, the better it is for your nervous system to remain calm. And also, the better it is for your nervous system in a crisis that perhaps you find yourself in one day. 
let's say the better it is for your anxiety or to prevent a panic attack or to help you handle a panic attack. So I am an anxiety specialist and breathing is in every single book I've ever read <laughs> about how to treat anxiety and panic disorder, panic attacks, as well as like you do it in your practice. I teach it all the time. And this, you know, I run into people all the time who say like, oh, I can't meditate. They forget meditation. I tried it. I can't do it. And I, I say, you don't have to meditate. You really don't. But let's just try a very simple breath here, a four, eight or a one, two, three, four. That's it. That's all we're doing. We're just trying a simple breath because that's going to help you prevent as well as down the road. If you're in a situation where you feel the anxiety rising or a panic attack hits you out of the blue. All right, people. I hope that is helpful for you. Um, it was really nice to run across like all these notes. It's like I had this little packet and I'm like, what's in this packet? You know, and it was like, oh, all these drawings I did and tips and all kinds of stuff and little sparkly cards. Yeah, and the writing on the other side. Um, it was really cool to find this. It had some really good stuff in it. All right. Remember, there's free stuff over at my website, free hypnosis for um, anxiety as well as emotional stability. Those are awesome. So go check them out. Join the newsletter. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. Mm -hmm.